The Rincon 3 is a lightweight, do-it-all shoe that has been popular since its initial launch. But the main criticism is that it just doesn't hold up over the miles. Have the updates to version 3 solved the Rincon's problems? Let's take a look at the Rincon 3 after 100 miles. Ten point four four miles, eight minutes, fifty nine seconds from out, and one hundred and forty one beats per minute today. Going for an easy run with some strides thrown in at the end. A perfect way to round out my testing of the Hoka Rincon Three. Now, before I give my thoughts on this shoe after one hundred miles, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that Hoka sent to me for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and they're not going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Rincon 3 after 100 miles. And the way I'm gonna divide this up is I'm gonna talk about how I've been using the shoe because sometimes as you run in the shoe over the miles, that may change over time. So that's what I'll talk about first. And then I'll talk about the wear and tear and how the shoe has been holding up first. How have I been using this? I've been using it as kind of an everyday trainer doing a little bit of everything in it, but especially when I do want to pick up the pace a little bit, that's where this shoe really comes in handy. So a day like today where I'm running 10 miles easy, where I think around mile eight is where I threw in eight bursts of sprinting, pretty much like at mile pace uh, for about 15 seconds with 45 second recoveries. Uh, and then cooling down for the rest of the run to round out that 10 mile run for today. That's kind of like the perfect way in my mind to use this Rincon 3. So something where it might be a couple of pace changes, maybe not so many that you would reach for say a carbon plated shoe, but just enough that you might not want to bring your heavier daily trainers this shoe really fits the bill for me. Or if your preference is just to have a lighter weight daily trainer, this is a shoe that's certainly going to work for you. I've done speed workouts in this shoe, 5K pace work running 800 meter intervals. This shoe does a really fantastic job of quick turnover and a fast feeling when you're really pushing off the toes. So it's a very capable shoe of doing everything from like easy running all the way to pretty much mile pace, at least for me. In fact, this is the shoe that I took with me when I went to go film the New York City Marathon last year. So it's a shoe that I was using for a lot of just standing around and the compression molded EVA does a pretty good job at being comfortable for that. But then I would very quickly all of a sudden have to run to try and keep up with some of the professional marathoners as well as professional 5K runners as I was watching the uh, New York Roadrunners 5K the day before the marathon. And that's where I was really running very hard, pretty much as fast as I could go, trying to keep up with those speedy 5K racers. And having the Rincon 3 on my feet was pretty much the perfect shoe to have for that kind of day where I was still going to be spending most of my day on my feet. So like carbon plated shoes wouldn't really have been an ideal choice for that kind of spectating. The Rincon 3 definitely stepped up to the plate. So I know that that's a very unique scenario, but it just does go to highlight kind of the range and versatility of what this shoe can do. Everything from a literal standstill to, at least for me, uh, a sprinting pace. The shoe really did a fantastic job, and I was very surprised that I was able to do all of those things without me ever really having to think about it at all. And by the way, it does make for a pretty decent travel shoe as well. My feet tend to swell a lot when I'm on an airplane. I don't know if it's the fact that, you know, air travel tends to dehydrate me a little bit or the pressure and altitude changes that are really messing with me, but my feet tend to swell a lot when I'm traveling and uh, having the Rincon 3 was nice and comfortable because there was plenty of room in the toe box for my feet to swell even when I'm standing around all day at the airport or traveling in an airplane. Now let's talk about though, 
how well it's been holding up over those last 100 miles. Now, I mentioned at the top of the video that longevity and durability were the biggest concerns when it came to this shoe for a lot of people. Uh, and I'm happy to report that I think that this shoe is doing better than the previous two versions of the Rincon did in terms of holding up over the course of the miles. Now, this midsole foam is compression molded EVA. There's no plate or anything else in there. It's just a compression molded EVA with a very strategic use of rubber on the outsole for traction. And the compression molded EVA, it's going to kind of compress over time. You could see some of the creasing, which for compression molded EVA indicates that the foam is starting to kind of lose some of its liveliness. But for me, this shoe still feels like it's still absorbing impact from the roads really well and still is very capable of picking when the pace for some faster work. So I feel like as far as shoes go in the overall scheme of things, it is, like losing a little bit of that life in the midsole foam a little bit faster than some other shoes might that are kind of comparable in terms of use case and price point. But I also think that it's holding up better than previous versions have in the past. And I think a big part of that is the way that they change the outsole or rubber. So you're not running as much directly on the outsole foam here. There are some exposed parts and you can see there's a little bit of scuffing in terms of my shoe uh, and where I've had direct contact of this foam onto the pavement or other surfaces that I'm running on. But also they've extended the rubber until they've given us like an extra row of these little islands of rubber uh, and changed the way that the rubber is positioned. So that way some of those other higher traffic areas that got really chewed up in version two aren't getting chewed up this year and we're just seeing some wear in the rubber. Now also I would say that the rubber is a very soft compound that helps with grip, but also wears down a little bit faster. So as far as rubber holding up longevity goes, it's also breaking down just a little bit faster than I would normally see in a 100 mile shoe. But I think the changes to these little islands or pods of rubber uh, were really well calculated and are doing the job of protecting this midsole quite a bit. As far as the upper concern, it's still very comfortable. There's no signs of uh, wear or any of the materials starting to fail. So still a very comfortable shoe, still a very breathable shoe. I'm loving the fit of it. I went true to size in mine, and I think that's the right way to go for most people that are out there. Even this pull tab on the back, I was certain that this little thing was going to rip within the first month of me having this shoe, but it's still here. It's still hanging on. It's still doing its job and I'm really surprised by it. So ultimately, this is a shoe that I took out for a 10 mile run today with some strides and I would not hesitate to keep doing that with this shoe for lots of miles into the future. So I think that the Rincon 3 is definitely improving when it comes to that durability and longevity which means that now you have a lightweight daily trainer that you can use pretty much in any situation. So that is something that I am absolutely loving to see with this shoe. If you have any other questions about the Rincon 3, please feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, stop by a live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube over on my Kofuzi Run Club channel. I'd love to see you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?